Welcome to my CBSE English teacher. Today let's look at the line by line explanation of the chapter The Ailing Planet The Green Moments Role by Nani Palkiwala from class 11 English. If you're watching my video for the first time, consider subscribing. You can listen to the explanations of lessons from classes 10, 11 and 12 English. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. Let's move on to the video now. The Ailing Planet is an article written by Nani Palkiwala in the Indian Express. Before we move on to the lesson, let's look at the meaning of these expressions. A holistic and ecological view understanding the importance of earth's resources and environment for the future generations inter alia among other things sustainable development a balanced development that meets the needs of the present while taking care of the needs of the future generations decimated to reduce drastically languish lot of species are neglected or go unnoticed catastrophic depletion a disastrous and harmful reduction in the number of something ignominious darkness disgraced or dishonored as nobody has knowledge about them or is enlightened about them transcending concern a concern that is beyond boundaries one cannot recall any moment in the world history which has gripped the imagination of the entire human race so completely and so rapidly as the green movement which started nearly 25 years ago it is nothing but a movement which gives more importance for the planting and growing of more plants and trees so that the environment is protected so he says that this green movement started around 25 years ago and this had captured the imagination and hearts of all the people around because they knew that this green movement is something very important and that is the only one that can save the planet from depletion of its natural resources in 1972 the world's first nationwide green party was founded in new zealand so the green party was first founded in the year 1972 in new zealand since then the movement has not looked back so from then onwards the movement has only taken more momentum and did not have a chance to stop its procedures or its functions we have shifted our hopes irrevocably from the mechanistic view to a holistic and ecological view of the world now we have shifted our hopes irrevocably irrevocably means something that cannot be changed back or reversed so our view was first mechanistic mechanistic means considering the society or the nation as different machines that function on their own so from this view we have shifted to a holistic and ecological view holistic and ecological view is nothing but considering everything working dependently on each other so everything is interconnected you cannot say that this system is alone and that system is separate so every system as a whole are connected to each other so we started having a whole change in our view itself now we have to look at the development as a whole and not any part of the world it is a shift in human perceptions as revolutionary as that introduced by copernicus so when this change has occurred it is exactly like how the human perception changed after copernicus came and taught us something now what has he taught us copernicus taught mankind in the 16th century the earth and the other planets revolve around the sun so until then all the people believed that the whole solar system was flat but after copernicus we started believing that the solar system is round and the sun is in the center and that all the other planets are revolving around the sun so there has been a shift in the perception of humans and it is as revolutionary as this copernicus theory For the first time in human history there is a growing worldwide consciousness that the earth itself is a living organism. So after this change in perception from mechanistic view to holistic view human beings started considering the earth itself as a living organism. 
an enormous being of which we are parts so the whole earth is considered to be an enormous means very large being and we are all its parts means there are different countries and continents which are the parts of this whole earth it has its own metabolic needs and vital processes which need to be respected and preserved so the whole earth itself has its own metabolic processes that goes on within its body and vital very important processes which have to be respected and preserved so we have to take care of all the metabolic and vital needs of the whole earth the earth's vital signs reveal a patient in declining health so vital signs of human beings are nothing but the pulse rate and the heartbeat etc so when the earth is considered as a huge living organism its vital signs also reveal that it is declining in health that means its health is in a very bad condition here the vital signs of the planet could also mean the natural resources of the earth now all these are in a declining condition now so that's why the vital signs of the planet is also declining we have begun to realize our ethical obligations to be good stewards of the planet and responsible trustees of the legacy to the future generations so the narrator says that we have to realize our ethical obligations that means our moral course of actions that we are going to take and the responsibility as good stewards stewards are people with good responsibilities so we have to take responsibility of the planet and we should also be responsible trustees that means people with responsibility and we should pass on this legacy of the planet to the future generations so in short we have to be responsible citizens take care of the earth in such a way that nothing is destroyed or diminished and we should hand over this beautiful planet earth to our future generations the concept of sustainable development was popularized in 1987 by the world commissions on environment and development so this commission was able to popularize sustainable development what is sustainable development development that stays for some time and not only for a short period in its report it defined the idea as development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their need so that is what i said so it is development it's not only for the present but also for the future without stripping the natural world of resources future generations would need so whatever development is going to take place it should be careful not to deplete the natural resources of the world so that even the future generations can enjoy all these at any point of time in the zoo at lusaka sambia there is a cage where the notice reads the world's most dangerous animal So there's a zoo in Lusaka in Zambia and there's a cage also but what is written outside the cage it is written as the world's most dangerous animal so inside the cage there is no animal but a mirror where you can see yourself so it's very clear so when you see yourself into the mirror you know that who is the world's most dangerous animal yes it is none other than man himself so man is one who is responsible for destroying everything around him so when you look at this mirror you will understand that man is the most dangerous animal in the whole planet itself thanks to the efforts of a number of agencies in different countries a new awareness has now dawned upon the most dangerous animal in the world so because of the efforts these efforts so man has been able to realize that man is the most dangerous animals in the world He has realized the wisdom of shifting from a system based on domination to one based on partnership. So now man has understood that he should not dominate over everything and he has to have a partnership with everything around him so that there is sustainable development of the earth itself. Scientists have catalogued about 1.4 million living species with which mankind shares the earth. So scientists say that there are about 1.4 million living species on this planet along with which man has to share the whole planet earth. He cannot dominate all the time. 
estimates vary widely as regards the still uncatalogued living species so according to the estimates or various estimates there are still a lot of living species that has not been categorized biologists rack on that about 3 to 100 million other living species still languish unnamed in ignominious darkness so according to the biologists there are still a 100 million of living species that are becoming weaker languish means becoming weaker because they are still unnamed in ignominious darkness that means nobody knows about them and hence they are disgraced one of the early international commissions which dealt inter alia with the question of ecology and environment was the brand commission which had a distinguished indian as one of its members mr l k jha the brand commission was responsible for looking into the ecology and environment and it had one indian member and his name was mr l k jha the first brand report raised a question are we to live our successors a scorched planet of advancing deserts impoverished landscapes and ailing environments so one very important question raised by this brand report was should we leave our successors successors means people who come after us should we leave them a planet that is fully burnt up or having only deserts and does not have any landscapes and its whole resources are diminished so the question is simple should we leave for our future generations a dry and dull planet i hope you like today's video for more interesting videos do subscribe to my cbse english teacher i'll be uploading the next parts of this lesson in my next videos thank you for watching and don't forget to like share and give your valuable comments below